went wrong uh, when he became a liar and made certain pledges to the Ulster Protestants and then broke them. And a man that can continually break his word and give pledges and then break them is a man that no one has any respect for. We are the law-abiding citizens, the upholders of our Constitution, the defenders of the faith, and the flyers of the Union Jack. Mr. Chester Clark has given assurances to us loyalists that he's going to preserve the Union and he's not going to let anything but dumb that would jeopardize in the least manner our position as an integral part of the United Kingdom. The Belfast Telegraph tonight says that I stand for the old ways, and that's exactly where I stand. Mm -hmm. I stand for the old Ulster that knew its enemies and knew how to deal with its enemies and knew that appeasement policy is the policy of folly. I believe in the oath of allegiance, and uh, I'm not like some people who take it and then try to destroy everything it stands for, but I'm not interested in personalities, I'm interested in policy. And I would think that Mr. Craig would make a very good Prime Minister. But if I had the choice of Prime Minister, I would say Desmond Poole would be the man for the job. That's the flag our children were brought up under. And no trickery is going to desecrate the soil our province. We are the people in Northern Ireland, as Ulster Democratic Unionists, who are saying we want closer links with Britain. But we must have confidence in the administration of the Britain that we want integration with. I'm very sad that in the historic Ulster Hall, I should hear loyalists cheering uh, when it is announced that the cause of the union is lost, let's face it, to quote Mr. Craig, and that we should now go ourselves for negotiating a break to that historic union. That saddens my heart. You did say that Mr. Craig was surrendering to the IRA in this. What do you mean? Well, the objectives of the IRA uh, have always been to break the link with Britain and to separate Northern Ireland uh, as part and parcel of the United Kingdom from the United Kingdom. That has been their objective. Mr. Craig, in my opinion, has now announced that we can't win the battle, that we can't save the Union. And if that's not capitulation and surrender, I don't know what would be capitulation and surrender. I'm glad our fathers weren't of that ilk. I'm glad in the darkest days when the Union was called in question before they stood manly uh, to their principles. We on this platform are pledged to use the democratic means once and for all to show the world where Ulster stands. Stephen Preston, you're a longtime colleague and confidant of Ian Paisley. Are you surprised at his new stand on independence for Ulster? Well, it's perfectly true that I am a friend of Ian Paisley. I'm very fond of Ian Paisley. He's a very complex character. Uh, he's a warm-hearted, kind person, and he's great fun. And his public image is certainly very different from the, his private one. But are you surprised that he is now talking about an independent Ulster? No, I'm not. I'm not surprised at anything that any loyalist or Protestant says in Ulster. But do you think Ian Paisley is making a real about turn now and moving towards William Craig? Oh, certainly not. No, 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 no. You can't have two people of, of such similar temperament as Bill and the Doctor working together in double harness. Not a possibility at all. Uh, as for an about turn, no. You see, you must remember that outside Sunningdale at Post Hock, all that, all that follows it, all that must follow it, if it is to be carried through. The only other alternative that has been stated is Desmond Bowles' uh, idea for an amalgamated island. And you must remember that the three groupings of loyalists have not stated any cogent philosophy whatever. Well, um, Mr. Paisley said he does not associate himself with Mr. Bowles' amalgamated island, but he is talking about an independent Ulster. Now, will the loyalist people in the street follow him there? Well, you know, I, I think I, I, when Bowl uh, decided to put forward his ideas for uh, an amalgamated island, he chose my intermediacy as a journalist to do so. And I was closely associated with him in the formulation of writing. Well, what about the loyalists on, on Mr. Paisley's new um, talk about independence? It is fair to assume, I think, that since Bowl 
has an extensive criminal practice and comes in touch with the hardline men on both sides, but particularly the Protestants, that he must have had some idea in advance of how his ideas would be received. He's a close confidant of uh, uh, Paisley in addition, although he's no longer chairman of his party. It's a fair assumption, I think, that Paisley may have had some precognition of what he was going to say. We're talking, well, about, we're talking me, about independence, he, though. Yes, yes, yes. We're talking about independence, not Mr. Bull's idea. No, oh, yes, yes, quite. What surprised me was that uh, Paisley did not accept Bull's idea. I think he got, personally, for I mean, my opinion is worth, I think he got cold feet, and I think he made the biggest mistake of, the life, of his lifetime. I think he missed the boat, because if he could have had the whole Protestant leadership if he had seized it. He has, in accepting independence, he is opting for something else.